Here is a quick story about police, drugs, and more importantly, prisoners. Jack and James are two drug dealers that had a bad day. The police capture them and put them in jail. The main investigator, Jane, knows that all evidence against the guys is circumstantial. So if she doesn't do something, Jack and James will walk out. But Jane's smart and had a great idea. Jane puts both prisoners in separate cells with no communication between them. She then went and talked to Jack. Listen, Jane told Jack, we have enough evidence to keep you in jail for one year, but I have a better deal for you. If you cooperate with me and tell me about Jane's full involvement in the cartel, I'll send him to prison for four years and you walk free, no charges. But if you stay silent and Jane is the one who cooperates with me, he will walk free and you will rot for four years in jail. If both of you talk, I'll split the charges and you'll only serve a couple of years. What is it going to be? This story is called The Prisoner's Dilemma, but let me show you why this is a dilemma for Jack and James. This is called a payoff matrix, which summarizes the decisions and consequences for both prisoners. Horizontally, we have Jack and the two decisions he can make. He can stay silent or talk to the police. And we have James vertically, same thing. The first situation is where both prisoners stay silent. We know the evidence against them is weak, so if they keep their mouth shut, they can walk in a year. If Jack stays silent and James talk, Jack goes to prison for four years and James walks. The reverse happens if Jack talks and James stays silent. Finally, if both of them talk, they will each spend two years in prison. Four different strategies, and here is what's interesting about them. This strategy is the best possible outcome for both prisoners. By looking at all the other situations, you'll think Jack and James will want to stay silent, but surprisingly, that's not what happens. Let's assume for a second that Jack decides to stay silent. He knows that doing that can get him out of jail in a year. But what happens if James, knowing that Jack will want to stay silent, betrays him and talks to the police? We will go from this payoff to this one here, where Jack spends four years in jail and James walks free. Funny enough, since both prisoners have the same deal in front of them, they will both think the same. If I stay silent, the other prisoner can betray me and I'll rot in prison. But if I talk, I can walk free and spend two years in jail worst case. Regardless of what the other person does, the best strategy for both prisoners is to talk to the police. If they don't, they risk a betrayal that sends them to prison for a long time. That's why this is a dilemma. This strategy here, where both prisoners converge and not have any incentive to change, is called a Nash equilibrium. It was John Nash, an American mathematician who published his theory of non-cooperative games in 1950. Here is the paper he wrote. It was called non-cooperative games. This work is what we know today as the Nash equilibrium and gives us a mathematical tool for analyzing competitive situations. Today, we use the Nash equilibrium in games, economics, politics, legislative decision-making, and even war. Nash, by the way, won the Nobel Prize in Economic Sciences in 1994, precisely for his work in Nash equilibrium. Your analysis of equilibrium and non-cooperative games and all your other contributions to game theory have had a profound effect on the way economic theory has developed in the last two decades. By the way, Hollywood made a great movie about John Nash, A Beautiful Mind, with Russell Crowe portraying Nash. I want to show you the big mistake they made in the movie, but first, let's talk about another example of the Nash equilibrium that illustrates the idea very well. Phone companies. Think about two competitors. Phone companies in a small town. I don't want to name names, so let's call them Acme and Echo. Each company has a hundred customers and they charge each $100 for a year of service. That gives them $100,000 of revenue. The first company, Acme, 
decides to be more aggressive and lowers their prices. They start charging $50 for a year of service. This of course makes some of Echo's customers move to Acme, but this is only temporary. As soon as Echo realizes what's going on, they also cut their prices, eventually leading to the market returning to balance because there is no difference in price anymore. And this is what's funny about this. Both companies will end up with the same number of customers they had before, but they now make less money. They started with $100,000 in revenue, but now make $50,000. That's why they don't have any incentives to cut their price aggressively. They are in a Nash equilibrium, just like Jack and James were in the prisoner's dilemma. And speaking of which, here is where things get interesting. We saw how the two prisoners ended in a suboptimal strategy. That was the Nash equilibrium. They could have spent a year in jail, but ended up spending two years. But we can change this. What do you think will happen if both prisoners have to repeat the same situation over and over again? That's called the infinite prisoner's dilemma and it completely changes the game. Listen to Matt Ridley and what he has to say about this situation. Uh, it turned out that the best strategy in a, a repeated business dilemma game is tit for tat. That is to say, be nice first time around, cooperate on the first play, and then simply do whatever the other guy did on the previous play. Tit for tat. That's the name of the optimal strategy that Jack and James will play to get the best outcome. It's simple. The first time the police catch them, they will stay silent. And every time after that, they will match what the other person did last time. To understand why tit for tat is the best strategy, we first must consider how much we care about the future. Here is my son, Nathan. He's a little boy, so he doesn't care about the future yet. Nothing that happens outside of right now matters to him. And we are a little like Nathan. Would you rather get $100 today or the same $100 in 10 years? We discount the value of anything that happens in the future. The farther it is, the less valuable to us. Let's call this discount factor and use the symbol delta to represent it. Delta is a value between zero and one. The closer delta gets to zero, the less Jack and James will care about the consequences of their future actions. But the closer delta gets to one, the more the future will influence their current decision. Let's say both of them have to repeat the same situation over and over again. Remember, the Nash equilibrium for them was to talk to the police. But what's their best strategy now? Here is a quick example. Let's say both prisoners have a conversation and decide their best strategy is to stay silent and spend one year in jail. They shake hands and go about their business until the police catch them. But then Jack decides to betray James. He talks to the police while James stays silent. Jack walks free and James gets a four year sentence. Good for Jack, right? Well, not so fast. In the short term, Jack gets no time in jail, but James will retaliate. So going forward, the best Jack can do is to keep talking and get two years every time. Let's do some quick math here. If Jack never betrays James, they will both stay silent and get one year of jail time forever. The first time, he will get one year in prison. Next time, he will get another year times the discount factor. Remember, that's how much Jack cares about future outcomes. Then he will get another year with an even larger discount and so on and so forth. This expression here is equals to one over one minus delta. But if Jack betrays James, the outcome will look different. The first time, Jack will go free, zero years. But from there on out, James will talk. So Jack will get two years forever. This expression is equal to two delta 
divided by one minus delta. If we set these two expressions equal to each other and solve for delta, we get this. Delta is going to be a half. As long as Jack cares about the future, at least half of what he cares about the present, he will be better off cooperating with James and staying silent. And this, of course, completely changes their strategy. If my opponent is playing tit for tat, my best strategy is to play tit for tat as well. So in the infinite prisoner's dilemma problem, both prisoners will cooperate with one another. A Beautiful Mind is a movie from 2001. If you haven't, you must watch it. It's a really good movie that won the Academy Award for Best Picture. And the Oscar goes to A Beautiful Mind. There's one particular scene in the movie that never happened in real life, it's obviously fake, where Nash has a realization that apparently leads him to the Nash equilibrium. Five girls enter the bar where Nash is with some friends and they start trying to decide who will get the blonde, which apparently is the most beautiful of the group. It's a great scene, but there is a small problem with it. The explanation they give in the movie is not correct. It's not a Nash equilibrium. Take a look at it. not buy you gentlemen beer. Oh, we're not here for beer, my friend. Oh. Huh. Will she want a large wedding, you think? Should we say swords, gentlemen? Pistols at dawn? Have you remembered nothing? Recall the lessons of Adam Smith, the father of modern economics. In, uh, in competition, individual, individual ambition, ambition serves, serves the common good. good. Exactly. <laughs> Every man for himself, gentlemen. Yeah, and those who strike out are stuck with their friends. I'm not gonna strike out. You can lead a blonde to water, but you can't make a drink. I don't think you said that. All right, nobody move. She's looking over him. Right, she's looking at Nash. Oh, God. All right, he may have the upper hand now, but wait until he opens his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the last time. Oh, yes, that was one of the history books. <laughs> Adam Smith needs revision. What are you talking about? If we all go for the blonde, we block each other. Not a single one of us is going to get her. So then we go for her friends. But they will all give us the cold shoulder because nobody likes to be second choice. But what if no one goes for the blonde? We don't get in each other's way. And we don't insult the other girls. That's the only way we win. That's the only way we all get laid. <laughs> Adam Smith said the best result comes from everyone in the group doing what's best for himself, right? That's what he said, that's right? Incomplete, incomplete, okay? Because the best result would come <laughs> from everyone in the group doing what's best for himself and the group. Ash, this is some way for you to get the blonde on your own. You can go to hell. Governing <laughs> dynamics, gentlemen. Governing dynamics. Adam Smith, he's wrong. If you think about what Nash said, it sort of makes sense, but that's not a Nash equilibrium. If all four friends go for a brunette, the best strategy at that point for everyone is to change and go for the blonde. A true Nash equilibrium is for them to agree that only one will go for the blonde. That'll give them the optimal strategy. So yeah, not the first time Hollywood has taken a few liberties trying to explain something, but the movie's still awesome. You should definitely watch it.